Hi, everyone. Before we start, I would just like to do a mic check. Um, can anyone hear me? Can someone just acknowledge? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay, I good. can hear you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for acknowledging my voice. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess for some of you who have been with us, uh, this is a third series of psychology related talks. Um, tonight, once again, I'm cho choosing another very controversial topic. Uh, and in fact, it's one of the most heavy research areas within psychology is psychopaths. Okay. And, and psychopaths itself is something that catches my fascination when I was reading through some literature. Um, and obviously, as I read, okay, the more fascinating it becomes. So tonight, I'm going to present to you in a nutshell what I've gathered about psychopath and how prevalent it is. So without actually, um, I mean, delaying everyone, okay, let's go through a bit more about tonight's topic. Okay, I hope everyone is aligned with me. Uh, we are talking about psychopaths once again. Okay, and this is a bit of my background, um, but remember, tonight's webinar is not about me, it's rather about you. So I'm going to run through this slide very quickly, okay, so that you can digest who I am in a nutshell. Okay, so started as a faculty, have been with universities, been to counseling, etc. So I think that is what you need to know. Okay, let's talk about actually the first thing, okay, the most important pressing topic. What is psychopathy? Okay, and, and that is something that average people on the streets, the layman, will not be able to decipher. Okay, uh, I mean, in Singapore, I do come across different terminologies. Some people say that psychopaths are the same as mad people. Okay, how many of you agree? Any one of you agree that psychopaths are mad in nature? Anyone? Okay. All right. So no, no speakers, uh, no presenters. I get a bit worried. I hope I'm not the only one talking while you all uh, enjoy your dinner. <laughs> but it's fine to actually enjoy dinner while I speak. Okay. Uh, I'm going to decipher this. What is psychopath all about? Okay. It's actually a personality disorder where usually one person doesn't have any conscience. Okay. They are not capable of empathizing with others. And more importantly, they only believe the world revolves around themselves. They owe it to themselves. They are not going to care much about their loved ones, neither are they going to care very much about people who surround them at work, okay, or even actually um, residing near them. So they only trust no one but themselves. And they are quite evil, okay. In fact, some people say unscrupulous. Um, and they're really actually adventurous as well. So this is a definition. Uh, of psychopathology, okay? And we are going to look at one other related question. Some people say that, you know, you're, you can be born to be a psychopath. Some people say people are made to be psychopaths because of the environment, okay? The external pressure cause someone to behave in very unique ways or sometimes even absurd ways. But in this area of disorder, personality disorder, it's actually surprisingly inherited, okay? It's given to you by nature of birth, right? And what happens in this type of actually psychology disorder, there is a disformity inside the brain, okay? That means your brain is not what most people on the streets would have. Something is misfunctioning or something is actually lacking, okay? In your brain actually structure, okay? Your brain cells set up. Okay, and because of the inheritance, many a times, almost 99% of people who are psychopaths are actually getting it from usually their loved ones. In this case, usually parents or even grandparents. Okay, okay how prevalent 1% of general population are psychopaths? Okay, if that doesn't allow you to connect how many people we are talking about, let's talk about Singapore's population with 5.7 million. Okay. If I do a quick calculation, you're talking about 57,000 of us residing in Singapore that are psychopaths. So if that is not very scary, think about something that is even more concerning. Okay, we talk about 7 billion people in the world. Okay, and there's 70 million psychopaths living around us. 
it is a very, very big problem, but it's usually ignored. Why? Because your understanding of psychopath is really lacking. And that's what this webinar seeks to achieve, to allow you to understand a bit more what happens, how, how do they behave, and I think more importantly, what is this all about? So 70 million, peop million people with psychopaths in, among one of us, um, that is really scary. And I mean, since we're talking about psychopaths, how many of you inside this webinar room acknowledge that you're a psychopath or think that you're a psychopath? Anyone? Most people don't. Okay, neither will you volunteer to say that you're a psychopath. And because of that, it's extremely difficult to spot. So tonight, one of the most ambitious uh, actually thing I try to achieve is helping you to identify who, who is a psychopath and what characteristics do they have. Okay, so I'm not surprised that none of you agree that you're a psychopath. Uh, in fact, I don't think you should agree that you're a psychopath, but there's definitely one of you out there. Okay, so in contrast to the general population, 15% of prisoners, okay, that are convicted, they are psychopaths. So that means 15 times more versus a general population at large. So do you think this is actually a big problem? I don't really think that prisoners, uh, especially when they're convicted, again, okay, they are a big issue because even if they're psychopaths, they are kept behind uh, bars. Okay, so most people, members of the public will never come across them. Okay, they are serving time. They are usually being prosecuted for some wrong misdoings. But it does not just stop there. And later tonight, I'm going to show you a bit more. If you think this 1%, something is even scarier. Okay, so before we go into that, I need to allow you to understand how many types of psychopaths there are different books, different authors uh, over the years, or over the last 200 years of clinical research. Okay, there is identified there are almost 10 types of psychopaths, and each of them are slightly different. Tonight, I'm not going to deep dive into every one of them, okay, simply because the lack of time. Uh, but these are actually the possibilities, okay, of different categories of psychopaths out there. I'm going to focus in particular on item six, which is a white collar psychopath, okay? Because most of you, I trust when you are with me, especially at seven, uh, I'll guess maybe a good 90% of you are working adults, correct? So white collar uh, psychopaths are actually something that's more common, especially in your circle. And I'm going to talk a bit more about six later on. Okay, let's talk about how to identify a psychopath. So who is a psychopath? Characteristics, okay. In the past, when you look at actually this area of study, um, researchers always feel that this actually falls back on two dimensions. First dimension, okay, it has to do with social emotional needs, okay. Uh, psychopaths, they are very superficial. They are not really putting their feelings into their dealings with people. They are actually full of deceit. That means, in other words, they lie a lot. In fact, they are habitual liars. Okay, it, it's not by choice. They choose, okay, to lie all the while. And they do it very frequently, so much that it becomes part of their life. They manipulate others, okay. In this case, they don't really care whether are you their close ones. They also manipulate you as well. Okay, and then of course, lastly, lack of empathy. And they have no guilt or remorse. They don't feel regretful about their actions because everything that they do is for them. So you can say that they are selfish. Uh, it's the most extreme of selfishness, okay? So that is one of the key dimensions, okay, that all researchers have found. So psychopaths would have social emotional needs, okay, and certain behaviors. The second dimension is social deviance, okay? They do not actually follow rules. They will choose to rebel, they will choose to go against certain norms of society, okay? And mainly because they are easily bought. They will need excitement, okay? You need something new, challenging, uh, spiteful, okay, to keep them going. The moment you ask them to sit down, okay, do something that is very much a norm, routine, they will not be that interested, okay? They are also very, very impulsive. They, sometimes they take certain actions without having second thoughts. 
And the last, they have a complete lack of control. They don't even know that they're doing the wrong things because they'll just go about doing it first before falling back. Okay, so these are the two dimensions that researchers have fall upon for many, many years, almost coming to 200 years. Recent research reveals otherwise. There are three teams actually. First team, in inhibition. Okay, they have problems with impulse control. And because of that, they can't control themselves. They do things very, very actually urgently, immediately. They are not going to be held responsible. They are, in fact, they're one of the most unreliable people you can see okay, in corporate work. Neither is it actually in social life as well. They are not your person to be trusted. Okay, because everything that they do is just based on impulse, on what they feel, rather than what is going to be happening. Um, so consequences is the last thing they will think about. Okay, accountability is the last thing they will uh, actually harbor or even actually adopt. Okay, they are extremely bold. Okay, they are not afraid of anything. Okay, they are only afraid. Okay, of not having something to do. They are very very tolerant towards ambiguity. In fact. Ambiguity is the environment that allows them to thrive. Okay, the more grayer an area is, the happier they are because that's where they can really put their manipulation powers to full play. Okay, surprisingly, they are also able to withstand stress. In fact, these are some of the most uh, actually capable people that's able to take, take tight deadlines. They are very dominant. They want to have the complete say over something. So bonus. Is the second thing. Okay, third, they can be really mean. They are evil, actually, uh, according to some research. They don't really attach themselves to anyone emotionally. Neither would they want to actually follow rules. So these are the three areas that reclassifies psychopath. And in fact, in a psychopath, you'll see all three teams together, right? So we just want to actually see, show you, okay, in the past, Researchers, psychologists think that, oh, yes, psychopaths have only two dimensions. But actually, if you look at recent research, it shows that there's three rather than two. Okay, and this happened in the last couple of years. Okay, then criteria. How do we know that you're a psychopath? First, okay, let's look at these five factors. Okay, they're very superficial, they're charming, they're intelligent, these are your brightest people in society. They have no anxiety when it comes to stressful situation because they can handle stress extremely well. They will not crack under pressure. Okay? They are very, very insincere. And in fact, most of the time they lie. So you are not going to get the truth out there. Okay? To manipulate you, they will choose to lie. They will choose to actually tell you things that are not factual at all, just to get their way. They have no remorse, no shame. Even when things go wrong, it's not their fault. It's someone's fault. And usually the people who are closest to them, that's their fault. So it's never them. They are not able to experience love or show you genuine emotions. Because you see, they are just like people who put on a mask everywhere they go. Okay, how many masks? God knows. Okay, but every time when they talk to someone, they interact with someone, they are not going to show their true self. Okay, and these are five criteria that define them. Let's look at the other five. They are not reliable, very irresponsible when things go wrong. They are not going to own up their mistakes. Impulsive, we talked about that earlier. Very clear-headed. Okay? When things are gray or when things get messy, surprisingly, psychopaths know or seem to know the way forward. So they offer a lot of solutions. Okay? Uh, and they are not delusion, neither are they going to adopt irrational thinking. They seem to know what is happening, and they always seem to have a solution to everything. Okay, and inability to profit from experience. Okay, so whatever happened in the past, whatever history has taught them, it does not mean anything to them. Because to them, whatever they are doing, they are always right. And because they're always right, they will take advantage of people who think that they are wrong. Okay, so lack of insight, you're not going to get a lot of meaningful okay, conversations of them. They're always hiding, okay? So this thing criteria defines a psychopath, okay? And in a psychopath, almost all 10 criteria are present in the same person, okay? All right? So 
questions offhand, if anyone. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to actually type in the chat session. I will answer them later. Okay, but that is not the most important part of the tonight's webinar. Okay, factors. Some of you who are psychology trained, you will realize in DSM, okay, DSM-4 or DSM-5, there is no such illness as psychopathy because it's classified as antisocial personality disorder. Okay, so psychopathy is not actually a mental illness. Okay, it's a category found within these disorders. And to look at seven factors, usually they cannot conform. Okay, people who are analyzed with this psychology disorder, they will not follow your social norms. Okay, they will always look things that's illegal or things that are not accepted by society. They would like to lie to get their way around. So it's always habitual lying, use of other areas, or they, sometimes they want to con others for personal gains. Okay, impulsiveness, okay, or they fail to plan. Aggressive, they can be really aggressive, they pick up fights, okay. Reckless, they are not going to be concerned about individual safety, neither about other people's safety. So they'll just do it anyway, without having second thoughts for consequences. Okay, consistent irresponsibility, they are not going to assume responsibility, that one I mentioned earlier. Lack of remorse. Okay, so these seven factors, okay, allows you to identify antisocial personality disorders. Psychopathy comes under this area in DSM-4, okay, uh, and same thing in DSM-5, which is the latest version of the Bible of mental disorders. Okay, so, so some of you who are interested know about others, uh, there's too much mental disorder uh, illness out there, which I cannot elaborate in just a webinar or say 10 webinars. So if you're interested, you can do a bit more research in this aspect, okay? So who do you suspect to be a psychopath? So earlier I threw a question um, to you in general. How many of you were acknowledge that you're a psychopath? Well, I, I won't expect you to acknowledge, but I want to do a small little experiment, okay? I have three actually individuals here, okay? So if you have been following me, Okay, number A, which is the slick and colors businessman. B, the smooth talking and manipulative lawyer. C, the arrogant and deceptive politician. Okay, what I would like you to do, I would like you to choose one, two, or three of the answers and key into the chat session. And let's see how many people chooses the right option. Okay, Sally says A, okay. Uh, Deborah says O, oh, okay, interesting. A, B, C, okay, all right. All three, okay, okay. Some says B, some says A, B, C, all right, can be O, all. all right. Mm -hmm. Any Anybody else? Okay, you can just continue. Um, let us reveal the answer, the real answer. Is all okay? All of them are psychopaths because they may seem to have only one or two of the characteristics I mentioned earlier, and because of that, some of you say that it's A, some you say B, some you say C, some say all. In truth, they are all psychopaths. Okay, and that's also the reason why it's so difficult to detect because some of you say it's A, some say it's B, some say it's all. So who is really actually the psychopath? They are, in actual fact, very, very helpful to you at first impression. Okay, and that's where they can mislead you. They are very, very helpful to you at the beginning, knowledgeable, charming, can talk. They are even charismatic in many cases. Okay, they can actually tell you lies and yet you choose to believe. Okay, and that's where they get really, really powerful, okay? So if you actually have a chance to work with a psychopath or you have been working with a psychopath, it's as if you are actually part of a chess piece, okay, on, on, in a game of chess. You are always being played, okay, at the discretion of the chess player, but you don't even realize that you're a chess piece. And that is where psychopaths get really scary. They manipulate you 
without you even realizing you're being manipulated. Okay. And in the last 25 years, something is changing for psychopaths. Okay. There's a sudden and dramatic increase in corporate psychopathology. Okay. And what really happens? Okay. In psychopath, corporate psychopathology, we call them actually snakes in suits. Okay. But they go by different names. Sometimes we call them corporate destroy destroyers. They are out to destroy the corporation. Sometimes you call them snakes in suits. Okay, they go by many different names. They can also be known as executive uh, psychopaths, corporate psychopaths, okay, white collar psychopaths, successful psychopaths. So it depends on actually your the category uh, that you want to place them un under. But regardless of the naming, they are all under corporate psych psychopathy. Okay, so why is it very prevalent? 4% okay, of the population, general population, are business leaders. Okay, in fact, 4% of all business leaders and CEOs are psychopaths. Okay, so earlier I mentioned if I use Singapore as a, actually a country, right, to calculate, we should have about 70, 57,000 psychopaths among us. But if I look at business leaders, out of all the business leaders and CEOs in Singapore, 4% are psychopaths. That means out of every 100 CEOs and business leaders, at least four of them are psychopaths. And that's four times the percentage of those found in the general population. Okay? If you look at CEO specific, 20%, one in every five CEOs, are psychopaths. So don't be surprised that your CEO falls into this category. Okay? And it's not just CEOs. It could be your VPs, it could be your general managers, it could be even the president or even the chairman founding corporations. And they are psychopaths. Okay? And this is taken from research, okay, author and a book as well. Okay, uh, but consistently, when a lot of actually university researchers goes into corporate uh, psychopathology, okay, the outcome is always the same. Okay, in fact, some people say that the percentage is not 100% trustworthy because this 4% has increased over the years to 12%. Okay, but I'll use the actually a very conservative estimate. Let's talk about 4%. And 4% is very really scary enough. Out of every 100 business leaders, four of them are psychopaths. So why are psychopaths really scary? I mean, yes, they manipulate you, they are out to actually cause some harm to their loved ones, but still you may not agree that it's going to affect you as a person. And that's where actually it becomes very, very um, different because they could be your ideal leaders. They could be actually the leader that is fearing your organization, or they could be the ones who is actually hating the company, the national uh, state government, so and so forth. Because they come across as this, okay, they are smooth, they are polished, they are charming, they have all the actual attributes that people like in a business leader or even actually a, a leader at large. And but the downside, they must their emotions. Okay, they have a dark side. They like to bully people, okay, especially their loved ones or even their colleagues. They don't have morals or ethics, okay, and they are very manipulative because they know they can manipulate others to get what they want. So because of that, okay, psychopaths always would want to go about achieving certain outcomes. So why do psychopaths enter work? What do they really want from the workplace? Three things, money, power, control. Okay, and where can you find money? Banking, power, politics, control, maybe actually security or government, okay? These three things are what they're after. So regardless of who they are, these are the three universal okay, uh, ones that they're after. And because of this, you realize that the business sector offers all three. Money, power, control is all there, okay, all in the same corporation. And that is also the attributing reason why you see more and more corporate psychopaths entering the business world. Okay, so 
some of you may not agree. Okay, my industry is full free of psychopaths. You know, psychopaths stay away from me. I am not going to acknowledge the presence of psychopath. Sure, certain industries are prone to attract psychopath. Okay, and let's look at some of these industries. In the past, okay, psychopaths will try to go into these five main areas: politics, okay, media, police, religion, law. In fact, um, there's one category that I have not added is banking. Okay, psychopaths are found in banks as well. Okay, and because of the presence of psychopaths, that gives us 2007 global financial crisis in the United States. Okay, these are corporate psychopaths who are at work. So they are after greed, they're after money, they have no morals. So because of that, banking is lacking here. And today, Psycho, psychopaths are no longer interested in just the traditional industries. They have moved away. They're entering the business world. So what does the business world offer them? I earlier mentioned money, control, and power. All three are found in the business world. And they're fast-paced. And because of the fact that business is fast-paced, it gets them excited. You know, it's like actually a, a drug given to them. They're addicted. They must actually have excitement in their life. And the rest of the other industries are quite still, but business world offers them something very, very different. So when you talk about highest percentage of psychopaths in the workplace, okay, this, uh, because of the shades of color, you may not be able to differentiate very well. This chunk, this portion, okay, sorry, uh, let me go back. Okay, this portion are the CEOs. Okay, so CEOs have the highest percentage of psychopaths. Next will be your corporate lawyers, okay? And then followed by media, followed by salespeople, followed by surgeons and so forth. So psychopaths, because they are found in the workplace and many of them are holding senior positions, that is when it brings us to another side of the equation. How much damage can they cause? Before we look at that, let's look at the merits of psychopaths at work. It's a double sword, okay? They are not always actually bad. They can bring certain benefits. The first benefit, the only positive outcome, they help people to climb the business world. There's a corporate hierarchy. There's actually a career path for them. That's the only advantage. But it comes with negative outcomes. Poor leadership, especially when psychopaths are leading the organization. They may not know what the next actually scenario will bring but they will go about doing it anyway. They have no integrity because lack of um, actually shame, lack of remorse. They are aggressive, okay? And they have counterproductive behaviors. So you will actually negative outcomes outweigh the positive outcomes. And it's actually always more negative than positive. So corporate psychopaths are not really your type of people that you want to stay or you want to keep in any organizations. Okay, and what's the issue with your psychopathic boss? Or it could be your CEO, it could be your director, it could be your chairman. So what's wrong with it? To understand what's wrong with it, we need to first classify, are they subclinical or are they clinical? Okay, let me allow you to understand what is clinical and what's subclinical. Clinical psychopaths are medically certified. That means they're certified by doctors. They really have a problem, okay? And when they're clinical psychopaths, they shouldn't be actually out there mingling with society. Subclinical psychopaths are not certified, okay? And they are found in society at large. That means they are undetected. So corporate psychopaths falls under the first category, subclinical psychopaths. Those psychopaths found in prisons comes under clinical psychopaths. Okay, I hope that's clear. So we are going to focus on the first aspect, subclinical psychopaths. And some of you may ask, okay, why are they so successful? How do they climb? Okay, what do they really do? What makes them very different? They become your bosses. They become your boss boss. Okay, first thing that they do, they will always use organization restructures as a cover, okay, to weaken potential threats. They don't like actually people to challenge their authority. They don't really like people to come near their power or take away their power. And because once they get into power of authority, 
they will always conceptualize schemes to remove their competitors. Okay, and many times they use organization restructuring, okay, to cover for their actions. They will use actual workplace bullying. Okay, they'll bully you, they'll make sure that you comply, uh, there's no questions asked. They will want you to keep to whatever they say and do whatever they say. Okay. And that's where their manipulation comes in. Okay. Third, they will always lie. They'll spread rumors. Okay. They'll turn friends against each other. They'll turn colleagues against each other. They will lie to get actually the upper hand. Okay. And because of that, many a times they will massage certain information, especially facts, to their benefit. Fourth, okay, they are very, very good in terms of managing their bosses, okay, or managing the expectations of stakeholders. They will always create a scene where, you know, sometimes when they're forced to do certain things, it's hard decisions. When things go wrong, it's not their fault. Uh, but when things are to their success, they will claim credit for it, even though if it's none of theirs. So that means in our words, if someone actually has a successful campaign or project, they will not shy away from fighting for credit, even though they have never contributed a single bit to the effort. Okay, and in their in their fight, okay, for credit, they normally would use their manipulation powers, okay, as well as their image to convince management that they are the ones who contribute to the success of the whole project. Okay, so they're very, very good in terms of managing others or first impressions of bosses. Fifth, they always justify when things go wrong. It's not really my issue. It's not really my problem because these are hard decisions. It's very tough to, to actually to achieve certain outcomes. So they always justify poor behavior, okay, as fault of others. But when things are right, they will, bring, they will try to claim credit for their own. Okay, and because of that, these five actions allow them, okay, be really successful in climbing the corporate ladders in extremely quick time. Okay, all right. Okay, so to, to add on a bit more, okay, there are nine factors why they are so successful. Okay, first, they manipulate people because they're charming, they're charismatic. Okay, many times they can manipulate individuals who have no thoughts of their own. Second, they hide their true self. They are not going to bring their real self to you and tell you, oh, I'm actually this type of person. I, these are my likes and these are my dislikes. They are not going to expose their weakness. On all fronts, they are going to put on a very brave outlook, even though they are not really that strong okay, internally, but they will not show you their true self. And in many cases, you'll never be able to figure out their true selves. Okay, and this is actually the surprising part because when you actually hide your true self, you only show what other people want to see. This can be very, very keep captive okay, for board, board directors okay, or people who hire board members. Because it seems like you have all the right attributes, okay, that business leaders should have and are treasured by the business world. Okay, third, they always come across as a knight in shiny armor, okay, uh, even though they have no answers, but they always seem, because they're clear headed, they always think that, okay, I should be able to come up with solutions and convince others to follow my lead, okay, and because of that, many across Many people will see them as a superman or a superwoman <laughs> at work. They always seem to have solutions, no matter how chaotic the situation is. Okay, even though sometimes these solutions are causing even further trouble to organizations. Very, very confident. Okay, self-belief in his or her abilities to a sense, to the extent of complacency. Okay, they think that the world revolves around them. The corporation cannot do without them. And because of that capability, that's why the organization is successful or is supposed to be successful, All right? Okay, five, they are very comfortable with lying. In fact, they lie all the time. They are not going to tell you the truth. And even if there's a truth, they will massage okay, the truth to their advantage. They have no lack, okay? They have a short lack of fear of failure. They are not afraid of anything. You give them any task, no matter how challenging it is, they will take it. Okay, and they'll say, yes, I can do it anyway. Okay, as long as you want it to be. And because of this, many, bo many bots will see them as aggressive. Many bots will see competence in them. 
because they will take on any task that comes that way, no matter how challenging it is. These are a positive attribute uh, to bots around the world. High energy. They are always very bubbly. They are hopping around the office. Okay, they cannot sit still. They are enthusiastic about everything that they come across, anything that they can lay their hands on, even though it's none to do, nothing to do with them. And because of this high energy and enthusiasm, many times they will dig their nose into other people's work and question why are you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? Okay. Seven, action-oriented. They can't sit, sit still. They must have action in their life. They must have things going for them. Okay, if you ask them to adopt a nine to six job, sitting down, looking at just reports, okay, answering phone calls, they can't. They are always walking around, looking for something, looking for things to do to occupy their time. Okay. Eight, they are very, very talented. They can multitask. They seem to be able to handle like six or seven projects at the same time without actually missing deadlines. Okay. Nine, they have no empathy. And because they have no empathy for others, they don't think for others, they can make the rulers actually decisions, business decisions ever, including firing anyone in the company. No matter whether they're loved ones, uh, they're actually assistant, they're bosses, give, them, give it to them, they will make sure that it becomes an opportunity for them to shine. So these nine factors combined allows them okay, to convince bots that they are your ideal business leaders. Okay, and each one of them, okay, are attributes that bots are always on the lookout for. Okay, you'll be very surprised. Ability to manipulate others. Why is it actually a positive attribute? Simple. Because when I can manipulate individuals, it means I can get them to be convinced into my ideas. Okay, I can get them to have a buy-in. So many times I can pass decisions without being questioned. Okay, so these nine factors are all underlying reasons why psychopaths are climbing the ladder faster than anyone to the extent that they become your bosses. Okay. So sometimes I actually, when I look at these factors, um, I do have a few of these attributes, uh, but it does not mean I'm a psychopath, unfortunately, because I, I think there are certain factors that are still missing in me. Maybe I need to work a bit harder <laughs> to be all nine. Okay. But some of you may have these attributes. Okay. Right. So, in the bot room, okay, if they are so positive, there's always a cause because they are not positive, to be honest. There's a hidden cause. So what is a hidden cause? They come across as bullies. Okay, they bully individuals. They bully employees. They bully their loved ones. They are thieves. Why? Because they will do all the unscrupulous things to get their way. They will steal data. They will massage data. They will not tell you the truth. But yet they are thieves. They are your bosses. Okay, or your bosses to be, right? There's a hidden cause because when you have psychopaths who are in key decision-making structures, it will have detrimental effect to your store shareholder value. In what ways? We're going to look at that. One, okay, the impact of business, economic cost-wise, billions of dollars. Okay, these people are the ones who are guilty of fraud. These are the ones who actually will daughter financial results. Okay, and they'll commit other crimes. For example, money laundering, insider trading. You know, they are the ones who will also siphon money. Okay, without you realizing, because they can get away very easily without being detected. So, economic costs billions of dollars in monetary sense. Second, unethical exploitation and manipulation of others. Okay, the the actually the mental turmoil. Okay, for people who are working around them, is unmeasurable. Okay. In fact, you'll find that it's extremely stressful for you to be working along a psychopath. Nothing will seem to please them. Okay. In fact, they will ask for, they will give you a very ridiculous request okay, that is not just acceptable within business context. So illegally, they will ask you to do all the wrong things. Uh, and if you don't, they'll try to manipulate you to do otherwise. Okay. Third, they'll turn co-workers against each other. Okay, they will tell you a story and then when they go to an echo worker, they will say bad things about you. Uh, some of you say, oh, that's politics, right? Isn't that office politics? No, psychopaths don't just do office politics. They will turn co-workers into enemies. It's not your typical office politics. 
Okay, these are people who wants you to destroy each another so that they can climb. They seem that to, to make sure that they seem and come across as very competent workers. Okay, agency problem. Because everything is about them, it's not about anyone else. They will serve themselves above the interests of the corporation. And because of that, they are the ones who care for their own. Okay, when things go wrong, this is not the captain along a sinking ship. This is the captain that will abandon ship before the passengers. Okay, before the passengers even know that the ship is sinking, they are the first one to jump ship. Okay, so agency problem is a big, big issue. Conflict of interest. Okay, lastly, they are the ones who falsify credentials. They will give you as a rated CVs. They are not going to tell you the truth. So some of these CVs comes across as too impressive. They are going to bump up the numbers. They are going to tell you projects which have never happened. They are going to give you actually references that were never there in the first place. And more importantly, in many of these corporate psychopaths, their qualifications are fake. Okay, um, and I do come across some okay, psychopath in, in one part of my career. Um, and, and to talk about the extensiveness of this, I remember years ago, I was talking to, to this actually deputy CEO okay, for a government-linked corporation. Okay, so basically, he shows almost all of the characteristics. And when it comes to credential, he doesn't have any credentials to start with. Everything that he produced, everything that allows him to secure his job, are falsified. To the government, he actually um, announced that, or he declared that he has an MBA, okay? He has a bachelor's, he has a diploma, but after checks, actually he has none. He's just a very um, sweet talker, okay? Very charismatic, very able, very able to harness the energy of others. So actually sometimes when you look at actually corporate, uh, corporate psychopaths, right? Um, these are the five things, okay, that they can really cause a lot of harm, okay? So how do we spot? How do we spot them? Some of you say, you know, after I present, you are still a bit clueless, you don't really know, how can I tell psychopaths easily from the rest? Okay, non-conformity, they don't keep the rules, they have their own code of conduct, they ignore people and the norms of society. So they are just like a hermit, okay? They live by their own rules. Okay, they're daredevils. They love challenges. They love thrill. The more exciting the task is, the more ready they are to embrace it. Okay, because they are not going to hold responsibility anyway when things go wrong. They are mutual independence. They don't really care about anyone, only themselves. There's only one reason why they are living. It's about them. Okay, themselves. Nobody else. Not even family members. Okay, persuasiveness. Very gifted. Very charming. To the extent that they have a very wide network of friends, they can influence someone very easily, especially the simple-minded ones. Okay, uh, surprisingly, they relinquish okay, uh, sex. They have a very soft, strong and abnormal sex life. Okay, and because of that, their loved ones, okay, especially their spouses, are going to suffer very badly uh, behind bedroom doors. Okay, they are not your typical sweet lover that you see that they portray themselves to be. Um, in the bedroom, anything happens, okay? I will not elaborate so much. Uh, one the last, okay? They are always on the move. They want to keep on moving, pushing their boundaries, moving from place to place. They don't stay long in the same corporation. They are just like actually um, the typical job hopper. They will stay put for a while. Once they achieve their aims, they move on to the next okay, organization or the next employment, okay? So they rarely settle down. Okay, they have a desire to explore, 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 move on, move on, and move on. So there's never a place that they call home. Okay. Freelancer, okay, more, many of them don't really like regular hours. They don't like regular work. In fact, if you give them actually opportunity to work independently from home, you'll love it, especially during COVID now. Psychopaths like to actually keep irregular hours. And even when they are going to keep regular hours, they are going to knock off work early giving all the different reasons I can ever think about. Okay, open purse, they are very generous with money. They have no qualms about spending. And that's to build up that image. You know, very positive, very welcoming. Uh, your ideal friend, your ideal 
business colleague, your ideal business leader. So they are not going to be stingy with money. Okay? They know that somehow or rather money gets favors and they are going to turn that favor against you in time to come. Okay, they are very high spirit. Okay, they are adventurous. They are out to look for trouble. Okay, they are always very much uh, advocates. Okay, of actually problems. Right, when things go wrong, they will not shy away from it. In fact, they will take them by the horns and say, "Yes, I'm here." Right, choose me. They are very, very much physically bold, tough. Um, they are mentally strong. Okay, they will not say no. So they come across as someone who have a can-do-it attitude. Okay, they have no regrets. Whatever happened in the past is not their issue. Whatever is going to happen in the future is none of their issue as well. What matters is now. Okay, they only care about the present, not the past, not the future. So to them, uh, the world revolves around the present. Okay, so key takeaways. Okay, I want you to walk away with the webinar knowing. First, a bit more as a society, how we should manage corporate, uh, corporate psychopaths, how we can manage them better. Okay? Uh, to manage better, there are many different ways. Okay? Some of them, some actually researchers have said, okay, you, know, can, you can do a peace scan okay? to scan your organization for psychopaths. Some people say, you know, there's a psycho, psychotherapy test, psychopathology test. You put someone through a questionnaire, based on the answers, the outputs that they have, you can determine whether they're psychopath. So there are different ways. You can do it instrument-wise. You can also do it actually um, qualitative-wise. Okay, so for HR, um, it's really difficult to keep a corporate psychopath away because they are your ideal candidate in many cases. But you still can if you do sufficient due diligence, reference checks, okay? And when I say reference checks, don't check with the peers check with the employees that comes under them, their peers who have worked with them. Okay, Psychopaths have witnesses, by the way. A lot of you think that, oh, you know, corporate psychopaths seems to be the perfect candidate for any job interview. May not. They do have witness, and their witness are revealed to people below them, not people above them. Okay? So they are, they are actually employees, their subordinates will be able to tell you a lot more. So in B, 360 scan, that is when you actually get peers or actually their subordinates to contribute to testify whether this person that you're hiring is a corporate psychopath. Okay. And of course, credential checks, verification, these are some methods to manage okay, and keep them out. Okay. What positions and control you can allow them? The best is don't allow them to have control over financial resources. These are the manipulative people who are out to cheat are out to actually uh, do harm to organizations. And more importantly, they cause a lot of emotional turmoil to people around them and the workplace. Okay. So in, in this webinar, you guys are, um, I mean, it was rather ambitious. I want to talk about a lot of things, uh, but yet I can't. Okay. And I've chosen to take a more focused approach on something that's emerging found in everyday life. And what better place to find psychopaths than your workplace?